Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is Alfred's Essentials of Music Theory, page 43, lesson 26, unit 7. Um, as always, I recommend that you have already done this work um, in your own book before taking a look at one of these videos because you will be much, much better off if you've already made some mistakes on your own and gone through the thought process by yourself. So here we go, we'll go through this quickly. Uh, this is um, tetrachords and major scales, okay? So the word tetra means four. A tetrachord is a series of four notes having a pattern of a whole step, whole step, and a half step. The four notes of a tetrachord must be in alphabetical order, but of course in music, we only go up to G, so it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So alphabetical order could mean F, G, A, B for your tetrachord, you know, whatever, or I guess it would be B flat in that case, if because we would be an F, but that comes later. Anyway, so here in review, the major scale consists of eight notes, two tetrachords joined by a whole step, right? So here's the C tetrachord, that's one, which is made up of whole, whole, half, and then the G tetrachord for the second, whole, whole, half, and each tetrachord is bonded by this whole step, right? So a major scale is just, again, um, two tetrachords joined by a whole step. Each scale begins and ends on a note of the same name called the key note. A scale can begin on any note, okay? So, you know, your C major scale, which is indicated here, begins on C and ends on C. That's how scales get their names, and that's often called the key note. The tones of a scale are also called the degrees or steps of the scale. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C can also be numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. In all major scales, half steps occur between the 3rd and 4th and the 7th and 8th scale degrees. That's where your half steps are. The distance between all other scale degrees are whole steps. So there's a lot of ways you can come at this. You can remember it whole, whole, half and then whole, whole, half, so two tetrachords separ separated by a whole step, or you could remember it as all of them are whole steps except between third and fourth and seven and eighth. There's a lot of ways that you can remember things in music theory depending on you know how you come at it and whichever ways that help you remember it, um, however, however it works for you is the best one to use. Okay. Number one, let's go through the exercise. Write tetrachords starting on the following notes, then add note names under the staffs. The notes must be in alphabetical order. Write where the whole and half steps occur above the staff. Okay, so we're just going to go through this. We're in bass clef, and remember your mnemonic device, all cows eat grass for the spaces, good boys do fine always for the lines, if you haven't remembered that already. Okay. So then we're going to go A, write the note name under it, B, write that under it, and then C. So that's your tetrachord. And note, according to music, that's in alphabetical order because there's nothing after G, so you just start over. G, A, B, C. So it's alphabetical order. And that's a whole step between G and A, whole step between A and B, half step between B and C. They put these keyboard references in here for a reason. Uh, you, you should know your keyboard when you're studying music theory. You should know what all these letters are. You should know what a whole step and a half step is. Um, you know, from, from F to G is a whole step. The black keys in between are half steps with the noteworthy exceptions between uh, B and C right? Because there's no black key there, so that's still a half step. And also between E and F, there's no black key there, so it's a half step. And that kind of creates some interesting scenarios, like E to F sharp is a whole step, and B to C sharp is a whole step. So really, you got to understand your keyboard. If you don't, make sure you're studying that. All right, let's quickly finish this. Uh, the next part, we've got for our next tetrachord is the C tetrachord. We've got C, D, E, 
and F. That works out a little bit nicer because uh, you don't have to go over that G and start over, but there we go. So C to D is a whole step. Make sure you're referencing your keyboard. D to E is a whole step. E to F is a half step. Number two, write a C major scale. Add the scale degrees under each note and indicate where the whole and half steps occur above the staff. The key note, C. Boom. We're just going to go through and just put all these down. Okay, so it just goes right up, line, space, line, space. So you can see, I end on C, started on C. And let's put our scale degrees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then remember our tetra tetrachord, whole, whole, half. Okay. And then your second tetrachord is the G tetrachord, G, A, B, C. And again, that's going to be whole, whole, half. And that's separated, right? The two tetrachords whoosh, whoosh, are separated by a whole step. So we literally just wrote out what's already up here. Boom, piece of cake. All right. Now, and then the next part, uh, write whether the distance between each note is a whole step or a half step. And I would recommend if this is new to you and you don't have your keyboard memorized yet in your head to reference your keyboard for every single one of these. All right. so. E down to D, that's a whole step. E up to F, <clears throat> that's a half step. C down to B, half step. And then here we've got C down to B, also a half step. C up to D, I'm sorry, E up to F, I'm thinking treble clef. E up to F is also a half step. And then A up to B is a whole step. And that is Lesson 26, Unit 7, page 43 in Alfred's Essentials of Music Theory.